All right, let's take a look at those markets. As uh, Tommy suggests, it's been quite a busy week so far. It's uh, only Tuesday, and already we are seeing red on the international markets. Uh, Joseph Busher from J.M. Busher Investment Group uh, joining us this morning. Joseph, good to have you back on ENCA. So not a good start for uh, the international side of things. What happened on Monday? A bit of a blue Monday for uh, the internationals. Certainly, most of the markets were down, Gareth, uh, you know, starting Monday, yesterday, the 23rd of October. But this week is going to be a very, very busy week with the uh, data coming through, um, you know, central banks releasing um, uh, basically their decision on interest rates. Uh, so JSC basically was a bit weaker during the day and then straightened uh, towards the close, but still ended in the red marginally. Uh, though uh, we have um, uh, Shanghai also uh, down, uh, the Nikkei down, but today the Dow futures is marginally up just 0.16% up. Um, so we might strengthen a little bit because I think, you know, the market is kind of priced in uh, the Middle East uh, conflict, uh, which basically clouded us uh, last week as we saw that most, uh, you know, people in some of the global cities are beginning to protest against uh, the conflict, um, you know, in the Gaza. Yeah, I know. It's certainly going to have a long-standing uh, effect as well on the international markets, which is going to affect us here at home. Let's bring up uh, a quick look at our commodities now, Joseph, as well as we talk about the JSC. Let's bring up uh, both the oil and the gold for a moment. Gold, 1,975, I see. It's just under a fifth of a percent to the good this morning. Uh, Brent crude, we have it at 90 uh, 22, so down about 2%. So just talk uh, Brent crude to us for a moment as well, because we're all watching it so closely because of the oil price and the fuel price. So it's down about just two dollars per barrel. Uh, just like you said, obviously gold is down about twelve dollars uh, uh, per ounce. Uh, so Brent crude certainly is going to impact us. We saw that in um, last month we had an increase in petrol, um, and we don't want that to basically come back again uh, coming this uh, November uh, because we'll see that you know our petrol might uh, increase instead of decreasing, which is the expectation right now, and that will affect basically. Our, our, our inflation figures and the outlook of the interest rates. Um, so, so, so Brent crude certainly does have massive impact as an energy source because quite central, I think, to Africa, given the fact that, you know, we just mentioned about the power shortages, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of people are using generators uh, to be able to supplement their electricity. And very quickly, let's run through the uh, currencies this morning as well. Uh, I'm not too sure where we're standing on the dollar this morning as far as the big movement is concerned. I see we're well below uh, that 19 rand to the US dollar, where we're 18.91, 2020 to the euro, 23.19. We're seeing a bit of a drop uh, in the dollar and rand. What's happening there? So the rand uh, kind of was holding up uh, yesterday below the 19 rands to the dollar, sitting as reported at 1891, uh, uh, just battling to break the 1890 level. Certainly we want it a little bit lower because it will help us uh, our overall. Uh, but I think this is really just because, uh, you know, in the U.S. it's a mixed bag. Um, in terms of expectations uh, this week, we have the services and uh, manufacturing PMI expected uh, to drop slightly. You know, your, your uh, services expect to drop from 50.1 to 49. And then we have manufacturing PMI also expected to drop from 49.8 index points uh, to 49. But home sales expected to edge up by 5,000 uh, units to about 680,000. That's a little bit positive. But also uh, on Thursday, 26 October, uh, you know, GDP is expected to almost double 4.7 compared to 2.1. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of mixed back in the U.S., but very, very positive. Um, uh, jobless claims uh, shot up a little bit, and I guess that could be just weakening the dollar a little bit. Uh, let's talk uh, some company news for a moment because obviously you've got to wear your investment hat as here uh, as well because it's one thing to talk about the markets. We always have to wonder where do we put our money and I hope I get the company's name right. Uh, Textainer, is that how I'm saying it? Is that how I'm supposed to say it? Jumping 40%. I would love to be a shareholder of that this morning. 41% in one day, I think everybody will be smiling to the bank and possibly taking profits off the table. Uh, Textena is a Bermuda-based uh, company that is involved in uh, cargo uh, uh, trading in the ship industry, 
in terms of purchasing, leasing, and so on. So there's an alternative investment company in the U.S. Uh, that uh, um, have decided to buy, uh, you know, uh, all of Texana's um, uh, sh shares. Uh, and that caused basically the the, the jump uh, of about 41 percent. Um, you you saw that basically you know this company is listed uh, on the JC and also uh, on New York Stock Exchange, and we've seen basically the continuous uh, delisting on the JSC, which is basically just decreasing the universe of the stocks we could trade on. But certain I think massive um, uh, uh, returns uh, for those guys who were holding. 16 shares uh, as of yesterday. So they will be continuing uh, with those negotiations, and I think it's a done deal, and they will be delisting from the JSC. Sure. Uh, it's going to be a big move for them as well. So if anyone's looking to uh, move into some kind of investment in stocks, Textainer might be the way to go, although you might have missed the boat by now, as I'm sure everyone's jumping on the bandwagon. Uh, Joseph, very quickly, just as we start looking uh, further down as well, producer uh, price index coming out later this week as well, the inflation numbers uh, coming out. I can't help but imagine that the lower stages of blackouts has helped that as well. How optimistic are you? Uh, so, so if you look at it in terms of that, really, uh, core inflation legs, uh, um, uh, you, you know, your, your, your headline inflation, headline inflation certainly is starting to come down. Um, you know, core inflation excludes foods and fuel prices. And so if we get fuel price coming down, as expected, certainly we might see a little bit of inflation coming, um, coming down in SA and helping uh, consumers if we move. Uh, towards the festive season, so the expectation is 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 good in the sense that you know your some of your central banks, ECB, uh, Bank of Canada, expected to uh, keep their uh, rates on hold, and which might be the case for us uh, as well. Uh, you know, coming uh, to the next rate decision. But one of the bigger news also um, to just mention that Mr. Edwards there is Kevin Naidu. Resigning as deputy governor from um, uh, our sub, uh, effective uh, I think yesterday. Um, and so that is also quite a major news uh, I think in the local market because I think you know he was quite um, uh, one of the most senior uh, executives uh, at the central bank. Yeah, Joseph, uh, going to be a fascinating week. Looking forward to uh, seeing what happens with this uh, PPI later uh, in the week. Joseph Busher from J.M. Busher Investment Group uh, joining us uh, this morning.